This is my route, Mako. Um, for over 31 years, I have been driving to this wonderful studio in Dulwich. And it seems a long way to go, but it is a remarkable space. And it is the place where I am myself as an artist. My work has developed and grown in this particular space. Um, it's mine, and I, it's where thousands and thousands of drawings and prints are kept, and it's where I can make my mark in the best way. As I think back over all the years I've been in the studio, something occurred to me maybe only two, three weeks ago, and that is what has happened in this studio, for me, is almost a microcosm of the evolution of man. It's quite, quite profound. When I started in this studio, the floors, which are now wood, were very cold concrete, and I used to work on my hands and knees. I did not have a table. I didn't even realize that I could pin the drawings to the wall. And so I drew on my hands and knees and it was a very kind of a cold and miserable business. And over the next 11 years, I gradually, without thinking about it, only now do I think back, stood up and got a table. And in a way, it's, a, it's, a, it's like man evolving from being on all fours to being on two feet. And once I was at that table, probably another couple of years before that remarkable drawing, of course, emerged the self-portrait. So there's a tremendous artistic growth in this studio. And I have in the studio many, many, many drawings from those early years, which I've looked at not, not long ago with my studio manager, Allison. And you can see the, the struggle. It was very hit and miss until my way of working emerged. And now there is a way. There is um, the numbers and rhythms set in. The minute I arrive in Sunray Avenue off of Denmark Hill, and I know I have a job to do, and the job does not get any easier, on the contrary. It's more more challenging because the standard is, is so high, the bar has, has risen a lot. The studio, uh, it's, it's worth mentioning that the proportions um, are exactly the ones suggested by Ad Reinhardt in a, in a document on the right studio for an artist. It should be a certain proportion and it should have skylight and the skylight shouldn't leak. Um, for many, many years my skylight did leak. And I can't say the roof is the best fit. We may even have a bit of a, of a drip in there. I'm a little bit worried. But uh, nevertheless, now finally, there's a better floor and the heat works pretty well. And I can be as comfortable as I need be, which is not to say awfully comfortable, because that's really not the point. Um, I, you know, there's, there's a very old kettle there, which I can make tea. The, the cups are rather horrible. Huh? They, they never get washed. Um, but as I say, it's not a place to be comfortable. It's a 
place to work and and read and write which I do yeah, I think you've noticed before there are many many books there and a lot of research and jottings jottings books so it's a it's it's an archive of a of a life's commitment to this drawing practice Stockwell now I used to have a great friend Jose Ferrez um, one of the first people to really become very engaged in my work, the late 80s, early 90s. And he used to say, every time I go to the studio with Linda, I count the seconds until our dance. And he would talk about this trip in the car, actually. Uh, I have text for him, so we, we can look at that text. He and I would make this trip together. He, he died not so long ago, well, many years ago, but he's much in mind. A very important figure. So he lived in Stockwell. And then we make a move here. And we're going to pass the street where Tamar Yasilov lives. She's a very fine poet. She and I did an artist book together called Marx. And what's important about that is that Tammy came to the studio to watch me work. She brought me... Um, a book about Beckett. We discussed a figure, Malloy, in Beckett's book called Malloy. And I started to work, and she began to write her poem in response to the sounds of the work. Et voilà. 